Today, I am pleased to have with me on the John Riley Project, Poway Unified School Board candidate, Ginger Couvret, joining me here today. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, terrific. You know, we uh, we saw each other a few nights ago at the GVCA debate or candidate forum. Mm-hmm. You were up on stage with your two competitors, you know, and, and so, um, you know, how's the... Uh, How's the how's the whole campaign going? Just overall, what are you what are you hearing out there? How's it feeling for you? Well, um, it's really been nice um, having all my signs out. I have to say, I, I love seeing the support from my friends and mm-hmm. and family members and mm-hmm. and community um, folks. So so that's been really good. Um, mm-hmm. I've also reached out and met with the principals as well as key people in the community, mm-hmm. and I've really learned. Um, from special needs groups, dyslexia groups, sports groups. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's lots of different needs out in the community that I've really been interested in learning about because I know what I know, being here for 23 years and what Mm -hmm. my kids have been involved in too, but it's good to hear what other people's um, experiences have been. Terrific. So like, what are the things you're hearing? What are the, the, the hot topics or recurring issues that come forward from people you talk to? Um, There's the newness, the unknown out there. There's been a lot of transition at the school board level. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's some concerns um, as far as as what the changes are. People always are a little uncomfortable with change, I think. Um, But also just being heard. um, In the past, we've been a very bottom up type of district. The schools Mm -hmm. have had a lot of independence. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is that we don't have a lot of things from the top down for procedures and protocols. And there's inconsistencies. Mm. Um, So a lot of folks really want to see that tightened up Mm -hmm. um, with citizen oversight as well. Right. Um, So concerning safety, um, Mm -hmm. that's always a big concern, both from, you know, the exterior threats that are, you know, tragically we've heard about from other states, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but also from just internal, you know, the bullying and anxiety that our kids are feeling and how that that affects them and their families. Yeah, that makes sense that that would be more of a you know, district-wide policy, right? You know, Mm -hmm. so they're kind of best practices that are applied at each of the 39 campuses, right? Exactly. You know, and just so that everyone knows what to expect when situations arise and how they're going to be handled, Mm -hmm. um, because they are really inconsistent at this point. So I know there's a new safety commission that's starting, which is going to be great Mm. with a lot of community members. Right. Um, You know, and to get those, those, those ideas from the community in, we have a lot of folks that really know their stuff, and it's nice to draw from their knowledge right. and make it better. Good, good. Yeah, I, I think that's important. You know, I mean, what was it about? Was it about a year ago that there was the incident at Rancho Bernardo High? Yeah. Yeah, and that was, you know, that that was finally, there was something that was close to home, right? It, it kind of was, rattled some cages, right. I Right, and we saw a real breakdown in communication. You mm-hmm. know, we, we didn't respond how we necessarily should have in, mm-hmm. in many ways. It left a lot of parents not knowing what was going on. So, of course, they're going to fear the worst. Right, of course. Um, you know, so we can't plan for everything. But as we learn from those different circumstances and then educate each school and the principals as well as, you know, all their faculty, I think that really makes a difference going forward. Yeah, I think it'll put a lot of parents' minds at ease, right? Right. Because they're basically handing over yeah. their child, you know, to the school and, you know, they want to make sure their child is safe, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes total sense. Um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to think about safety because when we were at the Green Valley event, right, mm-hmm. the Poway Chamber candidate forum, you, you look you look and listen to a lot of the, the candidates for city council and they are always talking about public safety, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that helps ensure our quality of life and it's part of what makes Poway so special. And public safety in the schools is just a natural extension of that. Well, it's the foundation. I mean, really, yeah. if you're if you're not safe for, you know, have food and the basic necessities, you can't learn. Yeah, that's right. Um, so it really is a, a primary thing we have to go after. And the other consistency, inconsistencies we have are services. Um, I met with a lot of special needs groups, and there's been a battle um, where they get very frustrated and have to get advocates, and they've had to escalate it to lawsuits. Um, Because there's not necessarily a focus on the actual student. Mm. And I think that sometimes we're not doing what's best by the child, but we're doing best with fiscal answers, which is really a shame. Um, So those are definitely things that we need to relook at and and really get a roadmap um, to help out these parents that have special needs kids so they can get them on the right track faster. 
Yeah. You hear a lot of stories about that, you know, because I know on, on one level, Poway Unified does generally do a very good job with special mm-hmm. needs, right? And I know that a lot of families, you know, in some cases move here because of that, you know, it's, um, but they're not perfect. The track record isn't, you know, A plus, right? You know, mm-hmm. um, and it's interesting if the special needs uh, uh, students, they do require a lot of resources mm-hmm. and financial issues are a factor. Uh, but then sometimes fighting the system and all the legal costs, you end up wondering, what if we just took care of the child first right. and not spent all that money on, you know, on lawyers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Wow. Wow. So you talked a little bit about, you know, people are concerned about change and at the school board level. Um, do you really mean maybe more change at the administration level with the new superintendent and the cabinet? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, we brought, I would say, outsiders in, which isn't necessarily the Poway way. Right. A lot of us have been here a long time and mm-hmm. we look to our traditions. Um, but sometimes that doesn't necessarily let you move forward. You need to have some some people who've experienced things from outside with different ideas that have worked in other communities and modify those, um, you know, especially when it comes to how, how we handle the business side of our of our district. I think that definitely needs to be tightened up more. And I think that we're getting an administration and the cabinet that's going to really hopefully drive that forward with the proper oversight. Yeah, I think that's good. That's a good thing. I mean, um, mm-hmm. change is often a very good thing. It's a sign of progress, right? Yeah, it is. You know, and um, I think after, you know, what we all went through with the previous administration, right, and the previous superintendent and all the drama associated Mm -hmm. with that, I think I would hope that people would think the change would be refreshing. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I I do too. I mean, it is. It's just an unknown. And and when people are used to the same thing, it just, you might get to... I don't think we can over communicate so we can really let people know what changes are coming, what they can plan ahead for, what they can expect and, and hopefully look forward to. So what are some of the changes that you've seen um, discussed that you you particularly like things that you're embracing? Well, I think they are really trying to get that upwards down control over the district when it comes to um, we're starting a new registration process. So we don't have to fill out those five forms every single year. Oh, they, they, they test nice. it with, one, with one school and it worked out well. So hopefully that'll be going online. So just streamlining a lot of those, those situations that'll take up, you know, take up a lot of employees time. You right, know, it, right. we're wasting people's time up there where they could be doing more important projects, but instead they're inputting information that should have already been inputted by us because everything should be online. Um, and it's a 21st century, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And our school district's not, you know, yeah, so I think yeah. it's starting to catch up a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've noticed even with the you know, written time cards and, you know, that's one thing that, that John Collins did is he didn't necessarily put in for all his vacation time. Well, mm. that process is all handwritten, mm. you know, so if we automate these situations, I think not only will people do it, so they're in compliance, but we can also see if someone's out of compliance a lot sooner. Right. And then eliminate the human error, too. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's a positive change. Um, yeah, I think when I, I think we, I heard a little bit about that at the uh, forum. Right. I think they were talking about, you know, handwritten triplicates and and, and handwritten time cards. And you're like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it's really hard for especially with some people who are onboarding for, you know, special needs aids. Yeah. It takes almost six months to get hired for a three hour a day job. Really? You know, yeah. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's kind of crazy how the onboarding is, is so slow and especially for those jobs where people are doing it out of their heart, not for the money. Right. Um, so the frustration level is pretty high. So the turnover rate's really high, um, which is unfortunate. Wow. Um, well, you would expect, obviously, there'd be a vetting process for any sort of teacher or anyone interacting with students. But six months seems like a long time. Yeah. When it takes two months just to get the physical, it's kind of silly. Wow. You know? So just, you know, just some, some inefficiencies that I think will be tightened up, which will be nice. Okay. I think also... So what I'm looking forward to, she's really trying to get equal opportunities across the schools, you know, because we've been so reliant on our PTSAs and our foundations to raise money. And some schools just don't have that ability. Right. Um, Because Pomerado just opened up a fantastic technical center um, from the district Mm -hmm. to give them opportunities. So that's exciting to see her making that a priority. Yeah, that's an interesting one because you hear that a lot where, you know, the schools that are in maybe wealthier neighborhoods, the parents are more generous Mm -hmm. and then they have a foundation and then they have a music program or a PE program and then this other school doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then you think, okay, how do you balance that? So all the schools get equitable resources, but at the same time, if parents want to be generous, 
you know, why not let him to be generous, right? So right. it's it's a it, two sides of that, right? Right, but I think they're almost the one thing I like is I'm a planner. I mm-hmm. like I like plans. I like roadmaps, mm-hmm. and I haven't seen that yet when it comes to the district, either with infrastructure or with technology or what, what's the major plan and what schools are first in line, what schools are third in line. Mm-hmm. Um, when that pot of money comes, how are we going to use it to the best? use of resources. Right. Um, and and so I think that'll really come into play with what she wants to do as far as the equality of the schools mm-hmm. and, you know, and the experience of the kids. I, yeah. mean, I mean, I look at some of the field trips that we did. They were amazing. And to think that some schools can't afford that is really unfortunate. Yeah, it is. You know, because Poway Unified has a very strong reputation and you would hope that that applies equally to all the schools, mm-hmm. that every student's getting that same experience. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. So, so what else are you hearing out there? Any uh, parents, you know, uh, non-parents, uh, teachers? What are they? What are the some of the things that people are talking to you about? You know, there's so much right with our district. I oh, mean, we is. really are lucky to yes, live here. And I look at you know what the, the, my kids have experienced and mm-hmm. how they're being successful in college. And mm-hmm. um, so people are pretty happy. You know, I think there's a little um, worry about pensions and, and uh, mm-hmm. that bond that's coming our way. Yeah. Um, so the kids who don't, the parents who don't have kids still in the schools, you mm-hmm. know, that's more their, their mm-hmm. interest and in how it's going to affect their property values. You know, as a real estate broker, that's kind of important to me as well. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, but, but like I said, overall, I think people are generally happy. Um, there's been a lot of transitions with different principals. Um, mm-hmm. So there still is a little bit of unknown. My kids go to, my daughter goes to Poway High and we have a new principal there. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that change. Right. Um, and I think the teachers seem so far to be on board, which is exciting. Good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's things that we can do to tighten up the district, but I think there's a lot good as well. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. I mean, um, in campaign season, you know, candidates often will point out the bad, right? Because mm-hmm. they're trying to point out how they can solve problems, right? Right. That's natural. But there is a tremendous amount of good things that are going on. I mean, you know, my two children went through this school district and, you know, I can't really think of anything really negative that happened. You know, it's all been a very positive experience. And yeah, we can talk about, you know, the the billion dollar bond and there's a number of other issues that are legit issues, Mm -hmm. but you know, the day to day, right? Right. The education the students are getting is it's still very good. Yeah. So, um, as as you were mentioning that, I think actually what people, what has been a surprising uh, conversation is people know there's some distress on the board at the at the school board level, mm-hmm. and that's been something I've had to talk away. People go, "Why do you want to do this? You know, <laughs> why are you setting yourself up for this fight? People are mean up there. You are know? you crazy? <laughs> yeah. So I, I have I have gotten that a little bit, right, um, which right. is, which is which is unfortunate that when people think of the board, they they think of the three two votes and things like that yeah. versus moving things forward in a more positive way. You know, right. and uh, so so that's been an interesting conversation to have to to counterbalance a bit. Well, the dynamics on the Poway Unified School Board are quite a bit different than the Poway City Council, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. There, it's become much more personal than it is issue driven, yeah. which is a shame, you know, because yeah. when there's conflict, you can deal with the conflict outside of what we're dealing with personally. Right. Um, so hopefully we can get back to that. I mean, I think that's what this election is kind of about as well. It is. It is, you know, I'm not choosing sides, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm just choosing issues and, you know, let's try to brainstorm for the best solution Mm -hmm. and move that forward is, is kind of, you know, I've been on so many different boards. That's kind of been the goal is surround myself with really intelligent people who want the best and come up with the best solution. Right. Yeah. I've I've heard that from a lot of other people in the, um, in the district where they're just tired of the drama, right. And they just want to restore the stability and, essentially the peace and quiet and uh, strength of the, of the school board and just really getting back to making the news about Poway not just 90% positive, but 100% positive, right? Well, you know, I think there's always going to be, you know, we have to try things, mm-hmm. you know, and some things will probably mm-hmm. work better than others. You know, mm-hmm. I, I definitely don't believe in reinventing the wheel, you know, as we look at, you know, getting our fiscal stuff more, more, re, more contractual, more structured. I want to look at other districts that are doing good things and oh, yeah. modify it to us versus try to come up with a new solution here. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, but so there's always going to be some learning pains and, and growing pains. But I don't like things to get caught up on the stupid stuff. 
Yeah. Right, and, right, and it seems right. like we've had a lot of distraction instead right. of moving really positive things forward. And I don't want to get bogged down on the things that really are inconsequential. But I really want to look at the stuff that can really make a positive change. Right on. I, I think I think people really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's important because uh, people want, like I said, they, they want stability and strong leadership and no drama, right? right? They just want to focus on kids and making sure they get the best education they can. Absolutely. So um, you made a uh, reference to all the boards that you've served on. And I, I've often characterized you as this community dynamo, right? That has <laughs> done so many great things in our community. And you and I never met until very recently, but I had always heard your name, you know, whether you were involved with Poway Soccer or the Poway Sports Association. And I know you were on the budget review committee for the city. So Tell me about your history in, communi- in the community here locally. Well, I've, I've been really lucky. I, you know, the, the, uh, as much as I give back, I get back to me tenfold. I mm-hmm. mean, I was an Army brat, so we moved every two or three years, mm-hmm. and I've been here for 23. So wow. I feel like a local. Nice. You know, and, and that's, that's pretty awesome. You mm-hmm. know, very rarely can I go to the grocery store and not see people I know. And mm-hmm. so, and that comes from the volunteering. You know, probably yeah. the best thing that I did was work for Poway Soccer. Because I got to meet a thousand kids, right? Which meant probably eight hundred families, mm-hmm. and these are the families that put their kids first. They're the ones that wanted to volunteer and coach our kids. Mm-hmm. They moved here so their kids would have fun opportunities in these youth leagues. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really got to meet a really good, good group of people. And you know, part of my job is recruiting volunteer coaches. And making their lives as easy as possible so they could just coach and work with the kids. Right. So it was really po- a positive situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I said, a wonderful group of people around me who would help me pull out goals if they got left out or, you know, all that stuff. So it was a great learning curve, you know, and um, I got to learn how to basically run a huge organization where, you know, it's all about playing time and it's all about fairness. And, and when it's your kid, it really matters. Yeah, it does. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If I had 99% correct placement of teams, but I missed, you know, 1%, but that's your kid, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. You know, mm-hmm. so so it was really, you know, kind of a zero sum thing. I can't screw up because it's going to be a kid who's not going to be on the right team or the right. parents are going to be able to make it work. So right. that was wonderful. Um, and then that led me into the Poway Sports Association, mm-hmm. um, which has pretty much a member from every um, sports organization in Poway or that utilizes Poway Fields. And then so it was softball, it was baseball, it was travel baseball, it was lacrosse, <coughs> Excuse me. it was rugby, it was all these different mm-hmm. organizations. And um, basically they would come, we would meet quarterly and they would give me all their desires on what fields they wanted when they wanted them. And I had to orchestrate the Poway Unified School District fields with the city fields mm. to maximize, you know, mm-hmm. the usage and out of fairness, you know, so we had kind of a basic, you know, way of we would do it as far as recreational and season sports first then, you know, just down in priority. Um, but we all really worked well together. And um, and through that powerful group, you know, we worked with the city and we got um, Valley turfed and lit. Mm-hmm. We got Meadowbrook at middle school turfed and lit. And then we got Arboletos Lights, um, which was, you know, kind of a very political yeah. thing that took a couple of years. Right. Um, but through those processes, you know, I learned how to work with, you know, both sides and, and also the fear factor of change. Right. You know, Arbolitos was not an easy fight. No, that was, yeah, I remember it was um, on the news quite a bit. It was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, but it was, it was interesting because I had support of a few councilmen and then um, it was time when Moy- Marilee Boyack was still here and she lived up there. Mm-hmm. And those were her constituents. Yeah. And um, she actually told Sue Herndon that she enjoyed having me as an adversary because, I always told the truth. I was always positive. Right. And I didn't blow things out of proportion. It was all fact related. Nice. Um, well, and because I was representing kids. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. important to, you know, yeah. if I have to answer to my daughter or my son, I'm in, you know, your kids. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Right. Um, and doing that right thing, we actually got what we wanted. And I think that those folks realized it wasn't as bad as they had feared it was going to be. Yeah, I think the fear was that the lights were going to be too bright. And, and it ended up being, I know, the lighting technology and the way oh. they were placed, it ended up being reasonably modest, right? Right. And, you know, and actually it's kind of a nice safety issue now because there's more activity there. So you don't have people hanging out doing things in the dark, you know. So yeah. and we, obviously we needed it because both football and, and soccer are, are winter sports. Yeah. You know, so we needed to have, you know, when it gets dark at five, these kids had to play. Yeah, um, well, it helps contribute to the family-friendly atmosphere here, right? Right. 
Yeah. But I think I always thought the Poway Sports Association was an interesting group because, like you said, they spanned both the school district and the city and kind of helped, I don't know, kind of resolve a lot of those issues because a lot of the teams or the leagues, they didn't know who to talk to. And, right. and I think it seems like the, the school district and the city council gave the Poway Sports Association a certain level of autonomy to work it out, right? Yeah. Well, and I think, and I think we really helped them out, mm -hmm. you know, by, by resolving a lot of the conflicts. You yeah. know, like I said, I was on more of the soccer side, and but my kid played football, and football mm. and soccer are directly <laughs> yeah. conflict. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we had to get creative on a lot of that, which left the school district out of that, those problems, having to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, but also, because we were a responsible group, we took care of the fields. Nice. You know, and one thing that's circling around now, which I, I'm very curious to see how it goes, is the school district is now starting to charge youth leagues and after school activities for facilities when right. they didn't before. Mm -hmm. um, this happened 15 years ago. And as Poway um, Sports Association, we fought it. Mm -hmm. um, because it would devastate a lot of our programs. We right. can't, we just can't afford it. And we, yeah. can, we don't want to charge our community members that much money. Yeah. Um, and then also it would have impacted the city fields as people couldn't afford school fields. Right. Um, so it was a very interesting fight. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens as this one comes forward. Um, because um, I don't know how much it's worth that million dollars that they the school district says they will get from this. Well, I think, you know, the school district's always interested in more revenue, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But at the same time, you know, taxpayers are already paying for that, right? They're right. already paying for those fields. And so, yeah, that'll be an interesting one. We'll see how that works out. Yeah, um, yeah the, uh, it, it, I don't know, we're kind of going down the path of fields, but, right. you know, it's, it's interesting, though, that uh, at Tierra Bonita, you know, they have those large fields there. And then, you know, there's an initiative being cooked up to maybe replace those with turf. And I know the city council has offered to help out. But the, the good news is, is that, is that there, there, people are finding creative ways, right, mm -hmm. to improve the infrastructure, whether it's at the school district or at the city, to just make things better for kids, right? Absolutely. You know, and, and these are volunteers. I worked closely with Bobby Ronsi, who was heading that up a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and Roberto Roberto was um, president of the PTSA over at Tierra Bonita. So it's a, it's a good group, and, and that, that the city wants to help out on a school field that they don't even have you know, any say on that field in particular right. is, is really special, mm -hmm. you know, and I think needs to be commended. And I think sometimes the school district doesn't necessarily, I wouldn't say thank the city, but understand what a special um, partnership we have. Right. Um, you know, we have a lot of joint use in, in our district, which is one of the reasons I'm running mm -hmm. is um, as I saw who was running, uh, you know, I don't feel they have the same relationship with our council and our staff at the city that, that I've had over the years because of all the different things I've done with them. Right. And when you look at our joint use at the PCPA, at Poway High Stadium mm -hmm. and these other facilities, you know, OK, the, you know, the city paid to, to turf Valley. But what are we going to do when that turf needs to be replaced? Right. You know, so these mm -hmm. are ongoing mm -hmm. relationships that we really need to maintain and, and foster. Right. Um, because it, it's a good relationship. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. It is a good relationship, and there's a lot of ways that each entity complements the other, mm -hmm. right? So um, let's talk about um, Jacko Smash. I mean, that was a no. that was a big project that you I took on. I know it was so fun. So um, when the parade was in jeopardy, this is this is how far back it went. The parade was in jeopardy, and they sent out the who's going to take over the parade. Um, both Rotary. Oh, that's right. You you jumped in on uh -huh. that too. Okay. Yeah. So um, Samantha Butler suckered me in. Okay. Because um, I like to jump in when they're I'm needed. I wasn't right. ready for the parade to go away, and um, so I worked with the Rotary on that. And um, but we both didn't really know what we were doing, and somehow I got to be in charge of getting folks in, learning how to do a whole chalk lineup. I, I learned a lot about how to throw a parade. I don't know if I'll ever use that information again, um, <laughs> but we got a hundred entries and I, we didn't lose money. Um, but through that process, I um, became friends, more better friends with Sue Herndon mm -hmm. and Heather um, Dugsdale. And um, we said, gosh, we had fun working together, not necessarily for the parade, but we had fun working together as a group. Yeah. Nice. Um, so we're like, what should we do? And ah. so we brought in Jody Campillo, who's who does a lot with special needs. Yeah, she's a great person. Oh yeah, she's fabulous. And mm -hmm. we're like, okay, let's do this. Th let's do something fun and maybe put it around Poway Days because you know we love Poway. Mm -hmm. And um, Heather thought of Jacko Smash, and Jody got the logo. And because I'm a runner and I was head cross country coach, and I run ultras, we're mm -hmm. like, okay, Ginger, you have the race. Um, so then I learned how to put on a race. 
Um, so we did that for three years and my husband, bless his heart, he and I would be out there lining the field in the middle of the night, um, with chalk and, you know, putting up our signs and, and all that good stuff. And, um, and it was great. So, um, my son, um, for this, because he's, he likes engineering, yeah, yeah. Uh, built a 28 foot trebuchet so that we could throw these pumpkins a hundred feet. It's like something um, you see from air. Lord of the Rings or and something. And it was, and it was in our backyard <laughs> and you know, a few test pumpkins and we have pumpkin th- patches growing up in our backyard from, you know, massacred pumpkins that went flying. Growing ammunition. Um, but how cool is it for him and his buddies to build this huge yeah. trebuchet yeah. in our backyard? That's awesome. Um, and it's, and you never get tired of seeing flying pumpkins. No, no, you don't. And, um, and now it's back in my house right now. But um, anyway, so we had that aspect of it. And it was really important for us to keep it free for the festival yeah. so that kids could bring their pumpkins in and, and enjoy the, the fun stuff that we had that going on there. We had a special needs um, versus a Padres um, softball game. Yeah, that was a great event. And, I enjoyed and that. those kids, oh my gosh, they, they are so amazing. And then, you know, the pros that came were just so wonderful to these kids. Yes, and they were. It just made, made their day. Yeah. And then Sue was amazing getting donations. Yeah. So basically every dollar that came in from our registration fees went to special needs. Awesome. So um, over that process, we, we, we made, I think we donated about $70,000. And, um, and our decision- That's a lot of money. It, well, and especially the way we did it. So what mm-hmm. we did, instead of donating it to a big group, mm-hmm. we donated to, to smaller groups where it really touched them. So mm-hmm. um, the most money went to the um, school district special needs foundation where special needs teachers could petition for a $500 grant. Hmm. And this touched every single school in our district. Oh, that's 39, awesome. you know, 39 schools you know, got this money. So that's like the equity of opportunity and, and resource that we talked about. All they about. had to do was reach mm-hmm. out. And mm-hmm. if you give a teacher $500, they can do so much with it. Oh, no doubt. You know, and, and so that was really exciting to see that. And um, I'm actually meeting with Janice Pepin tomorrow and talking about that relationship that we had. So unfortunately we gave, you know, we the three of us got tired. It was it was a big job for the three of us to do. Um, so Kiwanis took it over. Um, and uh, last year they, they had a good year, um, mm-hmm. but they decided this year that they needed to take a break. So we're going to see if we can find another organization to pick it up because mm-hmm. it was all fun. You know, it, when you can do good and it's all fun, it's all positive. Yeah. There's no negatives to it. Yeah. You know, maybe some people had to go around a little bit for road closures for our race for the couple hours, but it was all positive and uh, we did good. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. I, I remember participating in that event um, two of the years, um, and it was, it was a wonderful thing. And those trebuchets were awesome. <laughs> I mean, I just, like I said- I have like, it at my house. We rent it out for parties now. <laughs> you do? Okay. <laughs> um, but like I said, it felt like, you know, I was watching Game of Thrones or something, you know, it's just, yeah. I love that. Um, and, you know, kudos to your son. I know he's an engineering student at Cal Poly, and-, and that's fantastic. You know, he's able to do that as well. So, well, you know, it was interesting because it was, you know, his senior year. So he was taking six APs. Oh my God. He was running varsity cross country. Mm-hmm. He was building me a trebuchet, you know, um, but that's the kind of kids we have in Poway. I yeah. mean, you know, I, I, you know, my two older sons are, and my daughters, Wells are very much on the AP track. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of career and technical education mm-hmm. and the vocational side too. So we want to you know, get all those kids excited about school. Yeah. Well, imagine if building a trebuchet was like a school project, you know, I mean, and, and I know well, your son helped build some of the floats at the Rose Parade, right? Yep. He was actually inside it last year. He did all the electronics for the Cal Poly float. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. So yeah. we went up there and it's, you know, I told him he had to come in the parade with me down here. And he's like, the Poway Parade's a little different than the Rose Parade, Mom. Yeah, just and I'm a like, little. just a little, but you know, we still had some stands. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, a, you know, when you get the kids to do hands-on, it just gets that meaning and that oh, excitement yeah. no and, question. and they mm-hmm. figure it out. So yeah, they do. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so good. So what about vocational training? You hear people talk about that. Hey, we need more vocational. I mean, Sue Herndon talks about that a lot. So it's oh, it's 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 something that my, my kids are, are tired of hearing me talk about. My mm-hmm. carpools are tired of hearing me talk about. So when I went to high school in Texas, we mm-hmm. had two large high schools that fed into one vocational program. Hmm. And it was great. You know, and I thought that was what the norm was. Um, so how, describe that. How do they feed in? So you, it's regular classes, your freshman and sophomore years, and uh-huh. you're either a 
Colleen High, whatever, or Allison Eagle, whatever, you yeah. know, so you still have your, your excitement of being your home school. But then when you're a junior and a senior, you would do your basic English and math and science classes in the morning. And then the afternoon, you would go to this facility. And at this facility, there would be, um, you know, internships and such for um electronics, for plumbing, for cosmetology, um, for a lot of different trades. Um, but but it's not necessarily taking you off the college track. You know, that's the one thing I think people feel is it's an either or. No, no, um, but a all. lot of kids aren't ready to go off to college at 18. And, you know, I hear kids, you know, some friends of mine, they, the kid graduated from USC. They're $100,000 in debt. Ooh. They were a sociology major and now they're waitressing until they uh, figure out what they want to do. Uh, and it's like, you know what, let's let's get them to figure out or be exposed to other options earlier so they can figure out what they want to do, what they don't want to do. And then they are a little bit more focused when they go on to university. Yeah, for or, sure. Or while they're working, they can go to community college, which has some incredible pathways that will morph into something else later in life. You know, I, I think we all aren't on that necessarily that same path. And, um, you know, and I know that my middle son, he took the Palomar Palmer Auto um, Pathmaker Internship. I don't know if you've heard no, of that. No. Um, so it's through the hospitals and it's a very rigorous um, application process. Um, and uh, and then once you are in it, it's, you have to do four hours a week for I think it's almost four, four to six months. It's very rigorous. And they rotate you in different aspects in the hospital. Um, so it's, it's wonderful. And he thought he wanted to be a doctor. Well, he did this and he's like, you know what? I really don't like hospitals. <laughs> and it's like, I'm right. so glad you realized yes. this before, you know, yes. you've gone through six more years beyond college yes. and decided then you don't like it. Yeah. You know, so we were able to tweak his major at, at UCI and now he's passionate and excited about what he's, you know, pursuing. Um, so anyway, so I got, I, I went off on track. So that was my high school experience. Um, when I taught high school out here, um, I taught I taught at Poway High, and then I went up to San Marcos High School, and I taught physical science, which is kind of the lower level science. If kids are going to go into college, mm -hmm. they go chemistry or physics. Right. Um, so I taught the kids that wanted to get their physical science check mark and uh, graduate. Right. So I had to be very dynamic because they weren't going to just listen to me and talk overheads. We had to do a lot of experiments. We yeah. had to do a lot of crazy. We were throwing stuff off the roof. We were hanging stuff from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. We were doing a lot of things, but it's hard to keep everyone engaged if they're not going to go on to a, a career in physical science. Right. So that's why I'm excited about the vocational programs. And, and we do have already some pathways started in PUSD. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kids don't know about them. Mm. You know, we have fire safety at Mount Carmel. You know, we have the ROTC at, at Westview. We have the ag program at Poway High. And um, kids can now switch between these schools if they're really passionate about one of these 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 pathways. Um, but a lot of kids just don't even know they exist. Um, so we need to kind of drop some lower level classes so as a freshman they can experiment and see if there's something that really piques their interest. Um, so I know that we're starting to develop those those opportunities for these kids. Um, I'm on the Chamber of Commerce with the city of Poway, and they are really excited to do partnerships. They want to do job shadowing. They want to do internships. They want to pay for kids to get their certifications. Um, I, there's two different plumbing groups in our organization that will pay for these kids to get certified because they're so desperate for hardworking plumbers. Right, right. Um, and then um, what pulled me in, what, what actually made me put the application in for this is um, Caterpillar Hawthorne is going to be extremely generous with Poway High School and Mount Carmel to get diesel fuel, uh, diesel engines introduced to our kids because they're desperate for employees. And these are sixty to $70,000 starting wage jobs with minimal training after high school. And, you know, I talked to one guy who works for Caterpillar and, you know, out of high school, he started working for them, got some extra training and he was doing power systems in Fiji. You know, so wow. these are incredible opportunities that our kids don't know you know, they're thinking, okay, after I graduate, I go to four-year school, then I get a job. Well, let's, what job do you want and what pathway is best to get you there um, to get a real good job that you want to go to work every day? This so is, that, that's why I'm excited. So this that's, is awesome. This is great things because it's, it, we're changing the way we think about it, right? Right. You know, and you're right that the culture in this community is, is that everyone's going to college and, but that doesn't make sense for everybody. And having... All of these, I guess, um, 
these innovative ideas, these mm-hmm. new programs, you know, giving exposure to these students, you know, like you like if you want to do ROTC, you want to do ag, having these different schools have specialties, mm-hmm. um, thinking a little bit differently, I think is so welcome. I, I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I do too. And, and like I said, this is kind of why I jumped in is because I already have a lot of those connections that I think I can make this happen faster. Good. Um, good. And I'm a very hard worker. And so to pull the barge that way, I think it takes someone who's, you know, Anyway, but that's like I said, it's, it's been my passion for a long time. And and I see things lining up, you know, the states being more generous for that, pro, those type of programming mm-hmm. as well. And, you know, I spoke with um, Kathleen Turner, who's in charge of it at the district level. And, you know, her problem is, is they don't have enough people to go out there and spread the word that this exists. Uh-huh. And how to modify it. And I know a lot of volunteers that are willing to do that. Oh, yeah. You well, know, and, and yeah. it doesn't take kids necessarily off the college track. It's not going to give them a menial job. These are meaningful, exciting opportunities. Well, they are. Um, yeah. Well, what's what's better, you know, a seventy thousand dollar a year job in a trade or, or, you know, working at Starbucks, you know? Well, and, you know, and like Caterpillar, you get yeah. into the right companies mm-hmm. and they'll send you to, to grad school for getting your master's in business. Because oh. after a while, you can only work on an engine for so long. Yeah, that's right. You know, so there's opportunities within these wonderful organizations that, you know, you might not be, be at college at 18, but you might at 20 or you might go the junior college route, which our junior college route. I don't know why people downplay it. It's phenomenal. You know, my, my husband didn't have necessarily that much guidance coming out of Saints. So he did Grossmont for a year mm-hmm. and that opportunity got him to USD. Nice. Um, and he got his, you know, his diploma there. So it was a wonderful route for him as well um, that I think people should be proud of. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many different paths. You know, I mean, imagine um, having a, a vocational trade, having a solid wage and then going to school at night to pursue what you really love. Maybe it's art history or something, mm-hmm. you know, that's your passion, but that's not necessarily a career opportunity. And you, but you could do both, right? A- absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I, I just, like I said, I think our kids nowadays especially really want meaning behind what they're doing. I mean, they'll pay twice as much for socks if they know that company's donating an extra pair of socks to a needy country. I mean, yeah. our kids thrive on things like that. So I think giving meaning to what they're learning. I think it's going to cross over. When I when I taught at, at uh, San Marcos, I made a point to always coach because not every kid's going to do well in physical science. Well, yeah. But if I could see them being successful as a runner or as a soccer player or as a cheerleader, it, it helped me help them in my classroom academically as well. Um, I met with the, um, the, auto, the auto shop guy at Mount Carmel and they're working on, it's called soft skills or essential skills. Hmm. You know, just how to fill out a work order properly, huh? you know, because okay. yeah. sometimes, I mean, yeah. I tell you, you'll talk to teachers, yeah. even 18 year olds don't put their name on their paper sometime, you know, so let, let's get them to do that. Let's make sure that they dress appropriately. Let's make sure they're ready to work when they get there. Let's give these employable skills that they're not necessarily getting in AP history. And this is another avenue to give them the, the skills well, for opportunities. So yeah, yeah I, I'm sorry, I can go on and no, on with that is one good. because I, mean, I, I, I love this. Even a kid in AP history could probably use a little help on what to wear in certain situations. Well, you know, like I said, my, my, my oldest took 12 APs. He took six APs his senior year because there wasn't anything else he wanted to take. Oh, yeah, and like he probably awesome. would have loved to take a, a fuel, uh, you know, a diesel fuel class at the mm-hmm. auto shop. Or, you know, th- there's some of these dynamic classes that it just didn't happen for him. And, and like I said, and you know, he, he was over a 4.0 type of kid. But yet these other classes are just as relevant and interesting. Well, uh, well, as an engineer, he would have benefited, you know, from a lot of hands on like a metal shop or wood shop. He ended up doing the wood shop in your backyard building the trebuchets. (laughs) Exactly. But when I went to high school, I had metal shop. I had wood shop. I know that there was an auto mechanics uh, class. There was a couple of levels of that. I know there was home ec. Mm -hmm. You know, there were a lot of things that existed then that don't exist now, you know, because they've been sort of. I don't know, they've been deprioritized, right? Right. And, and it's unfortunate because I know my, my husband um, owned a, a, a machine shop for a while and he was like, darn it, I wish I had had those skills, yeah. my, tech, my, my techs, because they're telling me what's going wrong. And 
I know how to do a spreadsheet, but I don't know the error rate that they're having or, yeah. or you know, yeah. that. So it was it was interesting to see how just having that foundation can really help you even in upper management oh, yeah. ongoing. Because, so. yeah, people in management have to understand how frontline employees are experiencing, mm-hmm. you know, their issues, their challenges. It's like you undercover know, so, boss all over again. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, but, but that's what a good, a, a good business person knows how to... Um, uh, show empathy, right? And, mm-hmm. and understand what people are going through. And then they know how to better solve the problem, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, so much of this is so important, but it's just a question of how do you make it all fit in the budget, you know, and how do you make sure all the resources are there? And I know you've been successful getting, you know, some of these uh, private companies to put money in the, in the kit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's wonderful. But let, let's go talk about budget. And from a perspective of, um, you know, your time on the Poway's budget review committee and mm-hmm. some of the things that you've learned there that you think might be helpful for Poway Unified. Well, so so one thing that's wonderful at the review committee, and I know that you're on the school district one, which is which is really important, is to have citizen oversight and mm-hmm. so that we can understand it and, and articulate what's going on in our community. When I at the forum when people were coming down on on the on the city's budget and such, I was going, you don't realize how amazing City of Poway is run. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, yeah. so what we what we did is it was a I want to say it was about it was it was a two year commit, um, but we would meet monthly and we'd have someone from each division come and talk to us, be it transportation, be it community services, all the different aspects that made up the City of Poway, mm-hmm. and they would go over what they spent last year, what they need this year, and their priority list, and we would go through and go. Okay, why is this your priority versus this? So mm-hmm. we better understand their needs and how they're going to utilize the taxpayers' money. Mm-hmm. So we went through every division like that, and and what the city does that that's that's remarkable is that when they buy a truck, they start saving to replace that truck in eight years. Just like when we do our our, our roads, mm-hmm. it's on it's every eight years. Right. It, it's not it, so we don't have to go in there and do repairs within those eight years because we're doing the preventive. You know, we're, we're, taking, we're doing the car maintenance, you know, we're getting the oil changed, you know, so that we don't have the engine blowout, right. you know, and, and that kind of fiscal planning is so important. And, and they, um, so you don't have to borrow as much either because you're saving instead, right? Well, it, exactly. And, and you know what your expenses are going to be. You know, mm-hmm. you and I, we have our family budgets. Right. We, we don't go, gosh, okay, Uncle Sam, give me, you know, a million dollars so I can pay my mortgage. We have to live within our, our means. That's right. And the city's doing that, you know, and they understand that they have some issues coming up. So they're trying to figure out ways to make more money so that they can ma- maintain our, our standard of living here. Right. Um, the school district, I feel, hasn't done as concise of a job of that. When I was talking to the teachers union, they said, we got a copy of the budget that looked like this, but the school district had a budget that looked like this. It wasn't the same. And, and I'm finding as I'm trying to go through the budget is it's not as clear, you know, and then I met with Kimberly Beatty for a while. And I told her about my process at the city of Poway, and she's like, We've never had that at the right. district office. Right. We don't understand each component, which is very specific. I mean, we have, you know, huge, you know, we have a lot of buildings. We have a lot of employees. We have, you know, what makes up that $400 million budget is extremely extensive. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I don't feel it's as clear and concise as it should be um, because then there's wasted money in there mm-hmm. and, and inconsistencies mm-hmm. and overlaps. And, um, and that's where I'm hoping we can find some other monies um, to, to, to help with these other projects. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it would have to necessarily take monies from productive opportunities. Um, I just don't know if we know exactly how successful certain opportunities are. I don't, I don't know what the results are on different programs that we have out there. And if they're not being successful, then we need to either improve them or right. find another pro- program. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, especially meeting with the with the special needs groups, I'm saying, well, what are the statistics on this program? Yeah. And they're like, what statistics? I'm like, <laughs> how can you evaluate <laughs> right. something if you don't have the, the statistics? You, be you know, to... as a business person, it, it, that's what you go off of. You need, you need numbers and a- you need accurate numbers. You can't manage what you can't measure, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, um, mm-hmm. so, so that's something I'm really... That the first thing I want to do is really get the the different departments to educate the board, 
so that we can really understand their part of the budget. Mm -hmm. Um, And hopefully that'll help. Um, You know, I know that, you know, we're at the whim of the state and and the federal government in many ways on what money's come down to us. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to completely plan. But if we consider that money one-time funds that come down, then when we prioritize, you know, say infrastructure, Mm -hmm. we'll say, okay, RB High School really needs a new air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. Once we, if we get this money, you know, 50% is going to go to that. Okay. We're going to get, we need air conditioning in the Poway High School Auditorium. Okay. That money, you know, we need so Mm -hmm. many thousands for that, or Mm -hmm. the pool pump here needs to be redone. So we can go through and prioritize and then let the community know that, you know, Hey, I, I know it's not the way you want it to be right now, but as soon as this money comes in, this is this is our priority list. You know, my husband has a honeydew list that's probably about a hundred items. <laughs> but guy. I only show him the top four. <laughs> but I want to keep him motivated, you know. So once we get these, then then yeah. he can see that list. But yeah. but you know, it's a matter of priorities and then just letting people know that we we understand these are issues and we'll get to it when we can. Right. Um, but we can't make long term promises on these lump sums that we aren't sure are coming in. Yeah, it seems like that's part of the problem um, that has happened, why there are budget deficits, right? Because uh-huh. one-time money comes, because there's a, there's a the budget in Sacramento happens to be going really well. Right. And so Jerry Brown says, I want to put more money to education. And mm-hmm. so it's this one-time gift of cash. And then, yes, sometimes they're applied to expenses that have recurring year uh-huh. annual expenses that not only are expensive, but they also increase over time, right? Right. So, um, yeah, I think I've always believed what you're the track that you're on is the right track because Mm -hmm. the Poway, the city of Poway has a great discipline process Mm -hmm. that's proven for for years and they have a priority list. Mm -hmm. They um, it's transparent. Yes. They have the public that's involved in the budget review process and every every department makes their pitch. And the end result is that they've got balanced budgets, they've got a reserve that is sometimes too much, mm-hmm. um, and then they are able to intelligently deploy that those reserve dollars for, you know, the underground lines at Espola or, or whatever, whatever project it is. The, the Poway School District could learn a lot from that. And I think your experience there is very, very valuable. I am. I, I, I do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's also a, 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 a key differentiating point for you amongst your competitors. So that's a big deal. Um, what else? Um, what, just one more thing for City of Poway. And I know that you were a candidate or you put your name in the hat to be an mm-hmm. appointee, you know, for I think it was when Barry Leonard was eventually selected. Right. And I know you went through that process. So what did you learn through that process? And, and, and have you learned things there that are helpful for you as you're a candidate for yeah, school board? Yeah, you know what? It was a very good process. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and one thing you alluded to before is our city council, are, they're really nice people they are they they really are and they're Mm -hmm. able to really pull things it's nothing is personal which like i said is a very special relationship so it's very good for me to have to put myself out there yeah um i'm very much a team player Mm -hmm. um which is why this type of thing is very difficult for me i don't like to be my face necessarily because i i think one of my strengths is i'm able to put really good people around me Mm -hmm. people who are far better than me at their different aspects and then my job as a chairman or whatever is to take away their boundaries so that they can do what they do, they do best. Mm-hmm. So the process of, of doing that w- was out of my comfort zone, um, which mm-hmm. is always good to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did it um, primarily because I thought they needed someone to come in who already had a working knowledge of the city. Mm-hmm. And I thought they needed a woman, ah, you know, and, 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 yeah. and I hate to say it. I, I, I don't like the new rule as far as you have to have a woman on every, com- you know, um, committee right now, whatever Jerry Brown just passed. I In think the, the best boards. person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think, you know, I, I want the best person. Of course. Um, and, you know, I think in the, in the, in this situation, they thought Barry was the better person for that role, which, mm-hmm. which is, he's a wonderful guy and mm-hmm. I have a sign in his yard. So, so good. it's all good. Perfect. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I, th- I do think that I was, I was younger and I had younger kids that mm-hmm. I'd have more to, I'd have something to contribute to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, like I said, it was a very, very um, transparent process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and like I said, I've been very fortunate to work very well with the, the councilmen. And, you know, I, it may have been a blessing in disguise that I didn't get it, considering what happened at the Palomar Hospital with the water issues yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and and uh, <laughs> the rent at the Sportsplex and then the veterans housing. I think those are really contentious issues that... Um, 
you know, I wasn't part of, um, but that was maybe, like I said, an okay situation. Yeah. I, I know yeah. it's coming yeah. my way with the unified school district, and I know some of those issues are very contentious. But I think it's make you a better candidate. I mean, because like what you said, it put yourself out there. You know, mm-hmm. you had to kind of get out of your comfort zone. Right. Because like I said, w- what I've always known of you, I've known of you, I've never really met you because mm-hmm. you were always this name of a person <laughs> that was sort of behind the curtain, right? That was yeah. doing all these great things in the community, but uh, you weren't the person that was always out there, at least you and I never really crossed paths very often right. or until recently. And so I think adding that extra element to your resume or to your skill set of being more of a public figure, mm-hmm. I think is making you a better candidate for school board. Well, you know, and I, I think fortunately, you know, you, you hear, you say, you, you know, my name, mm-hmm. it's, it's usually pretty positive. It's I've always been, positive. I've been very always. lucky to be, I, I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, as Sue Herndon always says, do good stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and if you do the right thing with your heart in the right place and work your butt off, you know, we, we do good stuff, you know, yeah. for just, I don't even know if I've, I've been on the grad night committee at Poway High for, gosh, probably about eight years. And I've always done tickets. I do the ticket sales. Um, but my mom and I call every single senior who doesn't buy a ticket the week before and find out why. Ah. Is there a way that we can, do you need, do you need a scholarship for it? Do mm-hmm. you need, you know, so it's just that extra outreach that again, it's completely behind the scenes. Right, right. But it's the right thing. It's and It's totally consistent what I know of you. Yeah. 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 I, I, I didn't know you did that. Right. Well, and also, you know, I still do the yeah. Thanksgiving baskets at Chaparral. So, really? yeah. So my kids, I was there for 14 years. Uh-huh. And they couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> so um, one of my kids' years, they used to do always do a food bank. And I don't know about you, but I would go, oh, shoot, I forgot. And I'd grab a can of kidney beans and send that with my son. And so there really wasn't much meaning behind it. Um, so Creekside had done this program. And mm-hmm. it has since they stopped doing it. But I stole it from them because I don't reinvent the wheel. Right. And I modified it for Chaparral. And now the day after Halloween... Halloween's important. We can't, you know, do too much on, on our room parents. Right. Um, I give every single room a, a box, and I cut out 900 leaves, and um, they have a list, and every kid contributes to their box, and we give 40 of these boxes that feed a family for the for of 12 for Thanksgiving, and they usually get about a $35 gift card as well um, to other PUSD families that are in need. And we've been doing this for over 10 years. Wow. And, and like I said, we have it streamlined where I cut out the flowers and my mom and I wrap the boxes and we go in there and we resort it. Um, but it's neat that the kids are going, I'm bringing the stuffing for this family. I'm bringing the napkins and the candles to make it special for them. And it really has added meaning to our kids. And like I said, I've, well, we'll be rolling it out again November 1st. And, and like wow. I said, I, I love it. And, and mm-hmm. that's the kind of projects I've done for the community there. It's all good. It's all fun. You know, it's interesting because that, I, I didn't know you did that. That's yeah. incredible. And I, like when I said you were a community dynamo, I think I might've been short selling you. <laughs> so um, that the way you just described that just seems so symbolic of all the things that we've talked about through this mm-hmm. entire co- conversation, because you said it was a program that was it Canyonside had done and, and Creekside, you, yeah. Creekside, pardon me. And it wasn't your idea, but you, you took it and you made it your own. And, and, mm-hmm. and that's what you said about learning from other school districts, right? right? And learning the best practices that other people are doing and, and not reinventing the wheel. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a lot of that's really helpful when you're talking about, you know, our new administration and the things that you can put to, uh, uh, forward on the school board. Mm-hmm. So applying best practices. And then when you delivered those, um, you, you you got everybody involved. And it was sort of that equity of opportunity, you know, the balance that you're trying to do with all the schools. And in the end, do good things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So look at Sue Herndon is like all over the place in our conversation. Well, Isn't she, she a is, special well, person? Yeah. She, she's a mentor to me. I, I'm yeah. very lucky to have her have mm-hmm. her as part of, you know, people I look up to. I, I, I've been fortunate and through her, you know, I have a bunch of people like Lori Simon and, mm-hmm. and Mayor Voss and, mm-hmm. and Dick Lyles and, mm-hmm. and people who've been here and done things and have the experiences that can steer me in the right direction. And, um, and help me out, you know, because like, like I said, I, I'm the most coachable person out there, you know, and, uh, I'd rather learn from someone else's mistakes or if someone has a good idea. It doesn't, I don't, it doesn't need to be about me. You know, I want whatever works out best and that works out well with real estate too. It's like, okay, this is our goal. If you need credit to, for us to get that goal, I'll give you the credit or whatever you need. As long as we can get to this goal, that's, that's the important part. And mm-hmm. I think that's what's missing 
personally on the board right now is that people are taking things personally instead of let's going what, what's the goal right let's leave our pride behind and let's let's reach that goal and 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 do the right thing yeah there's there's definitely a grudge match on the board right now so i think um that's the beauty of this election is there's going to be a new person on the board no matter what yeah okay and that's gonna break the ice and kind of rattle things a little bit but in a positive way right you got to kind of break the paradigm Right. I, the three, two paradigm, yep. break it and then rebuild it into something that's going to be more positive. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's a big part of what you represent. Right. Yeah, and I like to think I'm a, a positive, optimistic force to be put on there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that's very important. You know, as we were talking about, OK, there's some things that are wrong, but there's a lot right. Yeah, of course. And, and I, I think that's a very important perspective to have on there um, that I, I think again, makes me different than my competitors in yeah. some ways. You know, that, that, that's the one thing that I did notice at the, um, at the, you know, the candidate forum a few nights ago is I looked at the three of you on stage and there was you and, and Kim Garnier and Kevin Jusa. And I looked at the three of you and I said, there's no weak candidate up there. Mm-hmm. Every one of you is strong, but you come from such different angles on this. Mm-hmm. You know, you each have very different strengths and, um, uh, I, I still continue to think this area B race is fascinating, you know? Yeah. And I, I hope people look at all three of us yeah. and, and decide what is the best for, for the district in, in their eyes. Right. Yeah. Cause everyone, you know, has a different set of values, a different set of priorities and, mm-hmm. and they'll find the candidate that's most aligned with them. So yes. good. What else have we not covered? Um, mm-hmm. things that are you, you're talking about when you're meeting people that you think are important. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think the historical knowledge, um, is, is, is very important, you know, cause I've been a you know, room parent for 17 times. 17 times. I know. Yeah. So and, you, have, you have three children, right? Yeah. So, I so what are their ages parent. again? Um, 21, 19 and 15. So the 15 year old is still She's a sophomore at, at Poway High. Right. So um, she's an know, athlete, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's varsity water polo and varsity tennis. Oh my, as but a sophomore. She, as a sophomore. Wow. She made varsity um, water polo as a freshman. She's, wow. she's kind of a beast. Um, <laughs> but, but she also ha- is taking two APs and, and an honors class. Oh, you know? she's so, like mother, like daughter. Well, you know, she, yeah, she, yeah. but she, she's been very fortunate to have a very balanced, all my kids have, have really seeked balance. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you can learn that, I wish I had learned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so it's good. So anyway, so the room parent thing, and then you know, I tend to jump in. I was I was Poway High rugby president for you know president of the rugby club for a couple of years, you know, and then I was communications <laughs> for track and field and cross country, and I am for tennis, and you know, was chairman of the sixth grade Olympics um, when Kelly was in sixth grade. Um, Oh I did God. science Olympiad. I learned all about bugs and classifications of bugs and, you know, dropping eggs off of three story buildings so they don't crack. And, you know, so <laughs> I've been fortunate to, have, wow. oh, you know, and then Poway Girl Softball, we, you know, I threw parties and, you know, I do tournaments and I've learned a lot of really cool stuff. You have. And, and we've raised a lot of money and we've done lots of good stuff and I've met amazing people. Yeah. You know, one, one thing that's, you know, a differentiator is I have over 10 XPTSA and foundation president supporting me. I, uh-huh. I have five volunteers of the wow. year supporting me. You know, so I have teachers that, you know, have, wear my shirts, have magnets on their cars and signs in their yard, you know, so I've been able to, to touch a lot of people. So you know, I think what I mentioned at the forum that I hope people look at the organizations and reach out to somebody they know in those organizations mm-hmm. and find out more about me that way. Yeah. Well, yeah. You um, check your references, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be really, really valuable. Yeah. It's interesting. Is like in, in your particular race, I think Kevin Juza was the first candidate that announced, right? And then shortly thereafter, no, maybe it was the I other way Garnier around. I think Garnier did first. Yeah, it was Kim Garnier and then it was Kevin Juza, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then you were relatively late in the process. You mm-hmm. came in and I remember thinking, oh my, okay, when Ginger enters, Everyone knows Ginger and no one has a bad thing to say about her. Hopefully not. They don't. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, everyone knows you and knows you in a very positive way. And I was like, whoa, this is changing the whole dynamics of this race. Mm -hmm. And I thought this could be interesting how this is all going to sort out. That's why I'm so fascinated with it. And it's the district I live in. Right. So I'm going to be one of the voters. Well, and this district is very special. You know, there's I know that the city council going to districts and the school district. 
I don't know how good it is splitting up the city because that's a small area, but the school district being as large as it is, I think going to districts has been a really good thing oh, um, yeah. because I think the needs of, of our area are very different than, you know, the Del Sur that's, that's growing that quickly, you know, yeah. and, um, and that's one of the reasons I jumped in is that I really felt that my other two competitors didn't have the roots in our district to know the inner workings, to know who to go to, to ask advice, you know, when different, um, policy changes or whatever comes comes to the board level i want to be able to talk to people in the community to find out how does this affect you guys Mm -hmm. and i know a lot of people fortunately that i think i'll be able to get a good good feeling for my district on 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 what the how the implications will be Mm -hmm. um and, and so that's kind of why i jumped in is i just felt I could bring that to the table and i think it's very important to be a strong representative yeah of the area that hopefully will elect me yeah i agree i um you know, the districting process has been interesting. I'm generally a very big advocate of it um, because I think it brings voters closer to mm-hmm. their representative, right? Mm-hmm. And that to your point, that representative better understands the nuances of what's going on in that particular community, the needs of the people. In this case, the needs of uh, how many schools? About eight of them that are mm-hmm. in our district that's or our area. Um, I think that's a positive thing. I think that's a good thing for the school district. And I think it's actually a good thing for the city council too, in my opinion. Um, but uh, I think as voters, we're all adjusting to it. Mm-hmm. I think people are trying to figure out what area <laughs> am I in? Am I in C well, and it's, or B? And it's kind of quirky. Yeah. It's not, it's not, I, I need to look up what street it is because even on the map, you can't really tell necessarily what streets are yeah. affected. So yeah, and then sometimes you know you're like these lines don't make sense or what's going on, and I, that's a whole other controversy. We won't go there. Right. Um, but. Um, uh, Wow. Yeah. So I, I, like I said, I think when you entered the race, I was like, wow, okay, th- something big just changed. <laughs> well, okay. thank you. I'm, yeah. No, and I mean that in a very positive way, you know, and um, because, you know, um, uh, Kevin Jusa has, you know, the support of the unions and that's, that's a lot of resources behind mm-hmm. him. And Kim Garnier is a well-known person, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and then now suddenly you've entered the race. That's why I said, I look at the three of you up on that stage and I said, okay, you know, you can usually say, okay, this person has no chance or this person, you know, I couldn't say that to him about anybody. Right. I said, all three of these candidates are strong. You know, we can debate their different strengths. You know, we can debate their angles, where they come from. But um, I was like, wow, this is an interesting race. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's cool that you entered um, because you do bring a different perspective, that, that perspective that didn't exist before you entered. Right, right. You know? The other two, they're, they're working hard out there. They are. Yeah, Kim Garnier was here last uh, last afternoon and we had a, an hour and a half podcast. I, I'm going to post it later today. Yeah. I'm hoping to post yours today too because we want to get them out there before the absentee ballots are, you know, in people's hands. Right, right. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, it is interesting. You know, like I said, I hope people do their research mm-hmm. and if they don't know, don't vote. But look at it and, and, and vote who you think is, is best. You know, that's, yeah. that's what's so kind of crazy about the whole election is, you know, I, I thought I knew a lot of people. There's a lot of people I don't know, you know, and, and that it's kind of been interesting to try to get to, to reach out to these areas. And, you know, mm-hmm. I've been spending time in Seven Oaks and Oaks North because they're they're very, um, very educated voters, but they don't have kids necessarily anymore in the school district. Mm-hmm. So just to educate them on what's truly important and, and what the implications are of this election, because I, I, I think, um, like you said, the three of us are very different and have mm-hmm. very different goals and different agendas. That's right. And I think people need to understand what those agendas are um, before they vote. Oh, no question. I mean, you got to you have to do your research uh, on this particular election to understand, yeah, who's supporting who and who's got the endorsement, who, because those things, those things make a difference, you know, in terms of, um, you know, the agendas of the people that are providing those endorsements, right? Right. Right. So, because um, endorsements, a lot of times are quid pro quo, right? They don't they, give they the, are. They don't they, give they, the endorsement for nothing. They expect something back for it. Right. Right. Um, now, I will say one of my, you know, I, I am um, endorsed by the um, San Diego Realtor, Realtor Association. Well, you're a realtor. I, exactly. So <laughs> fortunately, if they didn't give me that one, I would have been a little upset um, considering I have like, eight agents under me and everything. Right. Um, but, um, you know, I think we all want to increase our property values, especially yeah. with that bond coming up. Yeah. So for that, I feel like it'd be extremely loyal 
to, to what our goals are in the community. You know, well, we are fiscally responsible yeah. and, and we need to make sure that, you know, our property values stay nice and high and people want, you know, still think of Poway Unified as a fantastic place to raise their families and are willing to pay a little extra for their house here. Well, that's an endorsement that I think is pretty universally accepted as positive, right? Because yep. everybody wants to have a positive community and wants to have strong property values, right? Yep. So that's a good one to have, no doubt about it. Um, what else? What else we need to cover? Anything else you want to share? I think I think it's been a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. It, I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate the opportunity because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of because I'm a behind the scenes worker as far as like lining things and middle of night and all that stuff. I don't think people necessarily know everything I've done, you know, and right. I don't think they understand, you know, how I've grown my business. I don't think they've understand how I've participated in projects like the, like Jacko Smash and the parade that my kids aren't even involved in. It was totally just because it was a good project and we did good things, right? you know, so I, I want that to come out that, you know, it's kind of, when look at people look at what I've done in the community, it's, it's a little overwhelming, but, well, yeah. but to know that it's been really fun. I mean, it, it's, it's, I'd much rather do that than, you know, clean my house. So, you know, um, you know, so I just hope that people take the time to, to learn about me and, and to ask me questions. You know, I, 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 as a real estate agent, I'm on the phone 24 seven. So I'm used to Sunday at evening wow. calls. So. Do you sleep? <laughs> Not yesterday because wow. I had to go hiking this morning. Uh, okay. um, but, you know, I, I hope people to have this conversation mm -hmm. and um, and that communication is, is known to be wide open. So, yeah, I mean, I, like, like I said, I knew you did all of these things in the community. And then when I got to know you a little bit better during this election season, I knew you did even more. And now in this conversation right now, you do even more. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my goodness. That's what I want to. I like it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the thing. And then that's yeah. what makes it really, really special. And. And, and wonderful. And I think I can bring a lot of those different experiences to the table, that, you know, um, at the board level. And, and okay. like I said, I've been dealing with play time. You know, youth sports is kind of crazy. And oh if God. you can manage that, you know, we uh, run lots of travel teams, too. And, you know, I um, I was uh, I was the president of Poway National Little League a long time ago. And I used to joke with people is that if, if you can run a youth sports organization, you can do anything, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then then the, the previous president said to me, uh, Pat Johnson, if you ever got uh -huh. a chance to meet him. Well, you know, John was on the board. Was John was my John on the board with when you were on it? I don't know. Because he coached there a lot. I remember he took a I forget what but. Board I, level he was. I there, can't but, recall, but I remember yeah. your husband's name as well. I yeah. mean, your last name, you always think Corvette, Couvret, you yeah, know. Yeah, if but, only it was, yeah. But uh, <laughs> Pat, uh, Pat Johnson told me, he said, this league would be so great if we just didn't have parents. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. we just really did we, it for the we've kids. We've done that a few times where, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll stand behind a parent who's yelling to their six-year-old about, yeah. you know, hustling. I'm going, how much money do you have on this game? <laughs> you know, I don't think you do. <laughs> Let's let the kids have fun, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, absolutely. Well, Pat Johnson has a sign in his yard too for me. He does. Yeah. yeah so. I like Pat. <laughs> Pat is a great guy. So that, that's yeah. what's fun is that you look at all these things. I, yeah. I have, I have about 200 signs out there for people. So okay. hopefully they can talk to their neighbors and. And, figure, and learn about me. So. Okay, super, super. So it's been a pleasure having you. And um, I'm wishing you all the best, okay? Because, well, you. you know, you're representative of, you know, of our neighborhood, of our community, our area, Area B. Um, you and I share a lot of commonalities, you know, with youth sports. Both of our children go to Cal Poly. Mm -hmm. You know, we're Poway folks, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I wish you the best of success well, and you. good luck in the election. We're in the home stretch, right? Yeah, we are. When okay. the ballots come out, people yeah. start mailing them in. So. Yeah, so, you know, keep your foot on the gas, right? And and, uh, and best wish wishes to you, Ginger. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this as well. Okay, Ginger Courette, Poway Unified School Board, Area B. Thank you very much. Thanks.